Four female executives at different career stages put to rest four myths about women at work. The things they say. Myth number one, they say women lack ambition. They're trying to say that women don't have any desire to climb up the career ladder. I, I guess I don't see that as a women's only thing. But what I do see, sometimes maybe women lack confidence. And what's helped me to get the confidence that I can do it is encouragement, mentoring. I think building up that confidence through my life has been an important part of being able to carry out that ambition. The phrase might be that women aren't interested in, in ruling the world, in ruling the corporate world. Well, I don't know that that matters. I mean, I love being able to look at uh, the stuff that my team produces and the fact that they were able to do that under my leadership is extremely rewarding. I mean, it's not about ruling the world, it's about facilitating my team to be able to all perform well. It would be sad if ambition were related to schmoozing and drinking and, <laughs> and you know, ass kissing, really. <laughs> That would be sad. And maybe it's maybe a cultural thing marries the two together. And through example, I hope that that changes. Look, the truth is ambition is not gender defined. Ambition is what drives each of us individually. and Every individual has a different way of expressing that. You know, I want to do a great job in this project. I want to, I want the next job. I want to change jobs to show that I've got breadth. Uh, I want to make a difference in the work that I'm doing in work and outside work. I think ambition is broader than that sort of alpha male notion of incredible competitiveness in the workplace. And in fact, I think culturally that's dysfunctional. What happens though, of course, is that when opportunity locks you out, you find your ambition being directed elsewhere. And I've seen lots of women whose ambition ends up in fantastic small businesses or entrepreneurial enterprises, which means, of course, corporates miss out on that. And that's, you know, what a waste. I think when it comes to the term ambition, it's a no-win situation for women. I think uh, it can be used often f uh, by both men and women as a derogatory or an insulting term for the way a woman does business. And yet the myth that perpetuates certain barriers for women in the corporate world is that they lack ambition. And so it's almost a, a double-edged sword. I think finding myself in a, a boardroom as the only female and persisting despite the looks on, on the faces of the men in the room, indicating their doubt as to my capability or credibility, uh, the only thing that got me through was uh, ambition. There's no other word for it. However, I've always been hesitant to use the term to refer to that quality in myself. Some people think ambition is solely about getting to the top. That's not how I think about it. And I think that's, that they confine themselves if they think like that. And, and I think many women think differently to that. For me, it's much more about aspiration, about the ability to grow, to challenge yourself, to learn, and look at opportunities in that light. And it's not always moving up. Sometimes it's moving down. In fact, in my career, I made a decision at one point to move off an executive team, move down a layer in the organisation. And at the time, people thought, what's she doing? She's mad. But for me, it was about I was going to learn a whole new set of skills. I was going to challenge myself in so many different ways. So I think ambition needs to be seen in a very holistic way as opposed to very narrow, hierarchical, moving up the career path way. When it comes to the myths that shape the culture of the workplace, that's what they say to the things they say.